My sh I'm monkeys, so monkeys on me. You just got your teammate killed. All right, worry less about shooting this Monty. Worry more about making sure that your teammate stays alive. That's that's the number one thing I can tell you in that situation. What is going on, you guys? H21 Mayo here, and today we are going to be having ourselves another viewer VOD review video. So I've updated the form a little bit just to get a little bit more information out of the viewer, so that way I can help them improve in whatever they think they're lacking in. So tell me your history as a player. I've been hard stuck in gold for a while and wanted to start making the push for plat. And then he ends it with, I think my decision making could do with some improvement. Uh, his highest rank was plat three and that was last season. His current rank is gold one. Uh, yeah, just to get a little, a little bit more information out of you guys, just so I can kind of tailor the videos for the actual viewer. I'm not saying that I won't stop, you know, pointing things out that I see wrong, but just kind of hone in on what the, what the player thinks he should improve on and what he, he wants to improve on. So uh, I did a little update. This is going to be a regular thing now within the VOD review series um whenever someone s submits a vod they have to fill out all of these to uh in order to submit it okay i, li I like seeing this i like cigar, seeing cigar, cigar lunch, cigar lunch. They got... Stop. Stop. Cigar doors and twitch. you shouldn't be red pinging here Guys, the you, you have the yellow pink to your advantage you should be using it i tapped twitch you're, you're doing a really really good job of using your maestros here I played a lot of maestro in competitive and ranked, and uh, I like seeing I like seeing how how well you're using it. Now, if this switch drone gets your your cam, I'm gonna be yeah. See, okay, so you have two decisions there to make. You either turn your camera up so that way the attackers cannot shoot it, or you try to destroy the twitch drone. You didn't make either of those those decisions. You were going for the twitch drone. You got a little scared by you know not seeing it anymore, and then you turned your cam and now it's disabled, and it's also looking at the ground. Meaning that the Twitch drone can destroy it, or an attacker can walk up and shoot it. Still, Echo, stay on that drone. Twitch got my Twitch got, Twitch got my uh, my master in in piano. Echo, stay on this drone. Then they're really not getting your maestro cam. They didn't get it. Why? Don't peek it. Yeah, don't peek it. I got it. Yeah, they didn't get your maestro cam at all. This is a I, I like seeing this. Oh, mirror, 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 mirror. I, I, if if they if they try and have one of your thing, I got it. You're doing a really really good job of playing maestro right now. Bro, is, that. uh, That's an Ash. Gonna get your cam here in a sec. Running away. Running away. Okay, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay I'm with out. that Maestro cam being gone. Uh, your positioning kind of needs to be worked worked around here a little bit. Uh, you can be wall banged from a uh, cigar shop very easily. So I would much rather have you positioned like behind the, the top white mirror on freezer somewhere around there or even behind the other mirror. You also have an echo on cams. I know the quality isn't that great, but you also have an echo right here. Uh, he's in like the camera animation or the camera stance where you take the, the knee down and then, uh, you know, get on cams. So I, I would say reposition here a little bit because you can get caught out maybe a one bullet headshotted wall bang or something like that, which could be, which would be very unfortunate, but it's, it still is a possibility. Boys, no. right, church, but, hey, she, she was in. She jumped in. Jumped in. Skylight. She jumped in. Hopped in. Right, church. See there. Uh, that was on your teammates, but um, your your team your teammates positioning. So as I was saying, um, you know, if you're in a five stack queued with your friends, you need to make sure that everything's covered because there's really no excuse for it. You just need to find the holes. There was a one my bottom white, and then the last four of you guys were in cocktail. So, or I think the last. Three of you were in cocktail, and then Jaeger was somewhere else. But it, also that Amaro should not be able to cr be able to crouch walk up uh, <laughs> in front of this mirror either. But um, yeah, that, your death really isn't on you. It's more or less your teammates. But I would still like to see you reposition there, just because that position that you were playing wasn't really that great. If you move this Kade over to the left a little bit, you can get the hatch and the two freezer walls. You miss out on a huge opportunity of getting uh, three pieces of utility or reinforcements with one electric law. Why Why are you guys not reinforcing this wall off? Again, positioning, huge issue that you're having right now. You're not noticing that, so, that this whole bakery wall is soft. They could very easily Ash or Zofia it, open it, and now your entire rotation is cut off because, you know, they have the double door open already. You can already see a drone in. You know, if an Ash notices or a Zofia notices that the bakery wall is soft and you guys aren't bringing Mira, which is why I thought this wall would be soft, but you guys don't have one. You know, if they open this wall, you have nowhere to go. You have absolutely nowhere to go. You're gonna have to cross and lose some HP or even die, possibly. So you need you need to pick up on that. I would suggest you to move your, your electro claw off red. Yeah. Yeah, I would move that off of red. Don't overpeat, Jets. Just play time. Go for a late flank. She didn't prep now. 
Claymore off the prep door. You need to be calling that out. That's a, that's a very important call out there. You need to be calling out that the attackers Claymore off the prep door to Bakery. That could be a, a teammate's death right there. And guess what? If they, you know, who who's going to expect a Claymore there? And also, if you have the information given to you and you're not calling it out, that teammate who possibly might walk into that Claymore later on in the round, that death is on you. So you got your teammate killed. That, that is not on them to know if there's a Claymore there or not, especially when the information was already given to you. Now it is up to you to relay that information to your teammates. Missing out on uh, key, key things here that could, you know, be the difference of winning or losing a round. You need to um, you need to recognize the position that you're in right now. Uh, decision making, I Jesse. can definitely see why you would want decision making to be something that that you need help with or that, something that I should go over with you. So you have your electro claw on red, and you also have an electro claw on freezer side. We're gonna we're gonna ignore the freezer one, but what what we're what you're missing out here and what I'm about to point out is your teammate playing red. There's no reason for you to have an electro claw on red while this guy is playing red stairs. Because obviously they cannot go for the wall if this guy is playing here. Because he'll either kill them or shoot the utility off. And also the attackers so far have only taken bakery control. Which would indicate that the hard breacher is also going to be there. Whatever form it is, whether it's an ace, habana, thermite, maverick. Um, if it's a maverick, then it's a different story. But the ace, habana, thermite can all be countered with an electro claw. And if you place your electro claw in the proper spot... There's a little ventilation system on bakery, or sorry, in bakery, oh. I should say. Um, let me see if I Jesse's can. In. I actually just heard him putting down the thermite just then, by the way. Uh, so let me. Just play time. Go for a late flank. Let me let me try to just pause this on the uh, the right moment here. So if you look, actually, that that X is pretty accurate. But right here, if you throw an electro claw there, it cannot be destroyed from above a vertical play. It, th there's no vision on this. The only way they can see it is either if they walk into prep. Or they uh, they maverick the wall open and then you know look up and shoot it. But that is the default location for any electro claw, at least in high elo. That's uh that's where it's going to be placed 80% of the time, 90% of the time. That's where you should be putting your electro claw. They either have to walk into prep to shoot it, throw a nade from from above to uh, destroy it, or Zero has to put a camera on the uh, the wall and then look up and shoot it. But as you can already see, you've already shot I think two of uh, Zero's cams, so you know detecting those really won't be an issue. But uh, you need to understand the situation that you're in. Again, you have a teammate on red stairs. There's absolutely no reason for an electric claw to be on the red wall. Yeah, you put yourself in a horrible decision. Uh, you single-handedly lost this round for you and your team just by making one poor decision. I, I don't know what's going on inside of your head when you are playing, but you need to forget about whatever you're thinking about, if you are thinking, and put that thought into something that's going to be productive for your team. Uh, this happens a lot in low elo. Every single, every, pretty much every single time I vod review, uh, and anyone w within the series, their decision making is uh, isn't uh, up to par, and that's understandable. The crazy thing about that and why I'm saying this is because if they just pay a little bit of uh, a little bit of attention to their teammates' positioning, utility placement, things like that, if they just think about those things, then you could easily went around it's really not that difficult playing this game isn't uh as hard as people make it out to be you just have to put the right amount of thought into the right amount of things versus putting the right amount of thought into the wrong things there's a difference there but yeah like you single-handedly unless you know this jaeger and malusi can clutch a 2v4 you single-handedly lost your your team this round by poorly placing your electro claws and i'm, I'm just going to leave it at that uh, I've already gone over why, you know, why you need to uh, change your electro claw positioning. But, you know, if that bakery wall doesn't get open and you have a castle on prep window and you also have a shield here, uh, that's a lot of utility to clear. So you need to you need to take a recognition of what I'm saying. You still have an ADS in your pocket. Well, what are you, you going to do with this ADS here? You still have an ADS in your pocket. You were also AFK when the round started for like 20 seconds. Um, I don't, I don't know if, you know, someone walked in your room, you had a conversation, someone called you, whatever it is, but you should be worrying about putting down your ADSs before your barbed wire most of the time, especially when you have a shield and stuff like that. Like if you're going to hold bakery, there's two things that you need really, you know, you need to have someone playing your red hallway and you also need to have someone playing your, uh, your prep in case you die to retake the position or even the rotate behind you. Right. But yeah, you should be worrying about your ADS placement. If you're going to play a position like this, where it's pretty much you're playing this position to die, like you're, you're not expected to get Get out of this position alive which is why you see a lot of people and even myself when i do play this position on stream i play very very aggressive 
because I know at some point during the round, I am most likely going to die. And if I don't leave this position by burning, you know, two minutes of time shooting six drones or killing one or two people, then I don't think I've done my job. If I don't do one of those three things or something that has a great impact on how a round is played out, then I'm a part of the reason we lost. But yeah, you should always worry about your ADSs because the those are vital in support of your position. ADSs are far more important than uh, two pieces of barbed wire because, again, you're here to die pretty much. You can leave, but, you know, you're not always going to be able to, especially if the attackers know how to play around it and not trap you behind the bar. Oh, and I jump small big. You need to be communicating to your team that you have a Monty in Bakery with you, and he seems like he's solo. If you have a teammate go prep door right now, this Monty is probably dead. He could very easily be shot in the side. And when you have a, a Maestro, 81 bullets, high fire rate, it's very easy to, to injure or kill this guy. So you need to be communicating this. Monty's in Bakery with me. Okay. You see, you're not playing your angles properly. You need to tell this Maestro to get off of his cam and help you. You're playing... You're also playing, yeah, see now, you're playing way too passive. You need to be saying, I need help, there's a Monty in Bakery, not there's a Monty in break Bakery. That is going to register in your teammates' heads uh, a lot faster, and it's also going to emphasize on what you need from your teammates, instead of just saying a generic call-out for the most part. Um, if you're saying, hey, I need help, I need help, Maestro, get off cams, there's there's little things that you could you can do to call-outs, uh, so that way they register in people's minds a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. Th those are little things that people don't understand about giving callouts. Is, you know, saying, hey, I need help, Maestro, I need help right now, Monty and Bakery, whatever it is. Th those little things will help someone understand the situation you're in better, so that way you can help, so that way they can help you deal with the situation that you're being challenged with. See, you're just trying to take on this Monty solo. No, Monty's he is completely alone right now. He is completely alone and helpless. You you have nobody outside bakery door, or else they would have already walked in and shot you in the head because you're you're making a decision like this. So you need to be communicating, hey, ex teammate, come help me right now. Like get my show, get off cams. I don't care what you're doing. Come help me kill this Monty. Because not only getting a pick this early on in the round, retaking bakery control, but also killing a Monty. Those are three things that are going to help you tremendously during this round. They're ready on it. I'm landing back. Oh, why no, are why you reinforcing? Posted. See. That is not a good decision at all. You gave up a free kill. There's one Colts, I think. Again, you you put in your VOD review form that you wanna you want me to help you with your decision making. The only thing I can tell you that I've already said is is understand the position that you're in when you're in it. This is something that I say every single time when I VOD review. People don't put the the right amount of thought into certain things, and I've already kind of touched on this last round when you were playing Cade, but like, you need to pay attention. It, like, having good decision making is literally just paying attention. It's that easy. They have a direct correlation. If you pay attention more, your decision making is going to be better, because you understand more of what's going on during a round, right? If you pay attention less, your decision making is going to go down. There is a, there's a direct line between the two, where it, it's going to help you or it's going to be, it's going to, or it's going to have a negative effect for you. Like you looked at this maestro literally sitting on cams to your left three or four times, and you did not say once, maestro, get off cams. What the f are you doing? Like, get off cams, go to prep, shoot this guy. This, if I, if I was in that pos position, this exact same situation, I would have told this maestro to get off cams so many times, and we would have gotten this free kill. That is literally a free kill that you just tossed away, pretty much. Maestro. Monty's on me. You just got your teammate killed. Alright, worry less about shooting this Monty. Worry more about making sure that your teammate stays alive. That's that's the number one thing I can tell you in that situation. Holy smokes. This is pretty much a one-for-one one trade, which is useless because now it's going to be a 3v5 situation. Even if you kill the Monty, the Monty is probably actually going to have good comms, unlike you, and say, hey, push prep. There's an injured guy. They're most likely going to be reviving. And even if you aren't reviving, there's still going to be one or two people in there because I know Ash and I think Nomad are in Bakery. I died. Yeah. Monty, I died. Good rest, good rest quick. Let's fix this. Yeah, my bad. We, have rest quick. we have the Fiesta in prep. The Fiesta in prep. If you in prep, by the way. Right, okay, they got the wall. They're, they're, the they're wall. opening they're red wall. Red. red hallway, get in the wall. Watch out. Okay. 
No mess dead, no mess dead, no mess dead. That was a good shot. I got it, I got it. I found one. First floor. Ah! One up, four. That was a good shot. You, over, yeah, you, you overpeaked there. Now it's pretty much a 1v1 situation. Uh, because the Maestro's 20 HP, one shot. So, uh, you know, the Thermite kills the Maestro, and then, you know, the Thermite might win, win the 1v1. You know, one bullet headshot game. Or you could say the Maestro headshots the Thermite. Who knows? You never really know how a round is going to play out until it's already played out. But the one thing that I'm going to say to you right now, and if you understand it, you don't understand it, but you will understand it at some point. You need to be present during the round. You need to be present during the round. I just saw you, after you picked up your teammate, you are being so overwhelmed by Red things off. that should not matter. Prep. Instead of being present and looking towards where the enemy might come next, you're just like, you're crouch spamming, looking this around, not, by the way. not really sure what to do. Right, okay, like, look what you're doing here. Wall, what, what are you doing? Uh, you need to be present. And the same thing, like, a lot of people say... Uh, live in the moment, like aspect or perspective of looking at life. Live in the moment. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. The, the same thing applies to Siege. The exact same thing. Be present during a round. If you're not present, you're going to be lost. Yeah, he's on, he's on, he's on, yeah, he's playing the shield. I got greedy, my He's going to get the wall. You got greedy. My bad. That's what you said to yourself. That's good. That's self-recognition. That's something that a lot of people lack in this game is being able to self-analyze and self-recognize uh, what they did wrong. That is the right step in the right direction. If you keep taking those steps, you will become a better player. It's just as simple as that. You not making the, the one simple call out, which is arguably easier. No, it, it is easier than shooting two people in the head. You shot the Nomad and the, uh, the Ash. Both. You killed them both. Giving a call out on a Monty that's pushing prep or saying Maestro get off cams, there's a Monty in prep is easier. S giving uh, one call out on one position on one operator is easier than killing two people. Because every single day you have conversations, right? You you talk with people, you practice giving call outs every single day and you don't even realize it. Yeah, it's just different words in a different, uh, in a different structure. So put the right amount of thought into the right thing. This is what I keep saying. I'm going to drill it inside of your head. You're putting the right amount of thought into the wrong thing, which is ultimately costing you ELO. So far, we're a minute and 10 seconds into the round and you have not gotten cigar or piano control. That's not good at all, especially when the attackers aren't even holding a uh, pixel. Taking taking piano control and cigar control when it's pretty much given to you for free uh, is a huge advantage. I'm, ta I'm, ta I'm taking piano, I'm taking piano. It's cigar clear. I got it, I got it. I'm in piano. One thing that I'm gonna tell you, uh, and this goes for literally anyone watching this VOD right now, if you are ever in a five stack and you are communicating like this, there's no point in being in a five stack. You and your team are playing like five solo players in the same lobby. Like you guys are communicating and playing like five solo queue players, but still in a five stack, if that makes sense. You're doing things, expecting, or no, you, you're expecting things to be done. And then when you communicate, there's no response. Or if you communicate, there's no response. You, you're going under the expectation that things are being done. And when they're not done, you wonder why, even though nobody is communicating what they want done or how they want, how, how they want it done. Uh, it's that simple. That goes for anyone in this game. If you're in a five stack and you're communicating and playing like this, there's no point in being in a five stack. You guys have a minute 05 left and you haven't even opened freezer wall. You haven't established any site pressure and you also haven't gotten a pick. That is horrible on cafe. You guys are going to have to flood. Okay, that's a good pick there. Let's that's go. a nitro. It's a nitro off the board. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going down. I've got a bat sheet. Peeking this white hallway is something that you never want to do on this map unless you absolutely have to. I've played this map a lot in competitive. If your team is going to be taking cigar and piano control, what are you going to try to take next? Probably long barb, try to plant default plant or freezer door or trash. I don't think they have a mute. I could be mistaken, but they definitely don't have any kids on this wall. And if there's a mute on it, you can very easily go skylight or even bandits, but there is no bandits. But if there's a mute, you can go skylight, shoot the mute jammer off and, you know, open freezer wall, establish pressure that way. Um, but peeking this white doorway is something that you never need to do. Absolutely never. I see so many people try to do this. Uh, 
where you know they try to take Whitehall control and it's just not it, most of the time it doesn't go in their favor or in their direction because they have three different angles that are super favorable for the defenders. They can head glitch top white stairs, which is a really hard gunfight, especially on console, uh, because you know you're limited with your aim and your mechanics. They can peek on top of the planks, like get boosted up on top of the wood stacks, uh, top white stairs, and they can also peek the head glitch on the uh, the 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 drywall or plywood or whatever it is, top white. So they have three different angles that are extremely favorable for them while you're peeking one doorway. What you should be doing here is setting a drone down if nobody's going to be playing or holding this angle passively. You should be having a drone set here and then have someone on it, which very easily can be you. And also your jackal is peeking with the fuser for no reason. And another thing that I'm going to touch on right now is you're on a five stack, so I'm going to critique you and your teammates because it is on you for not communicating things like this. Uh, because decision making is something that again you wanted me to go over decision making on someone not playing skylight if you don't have someone playing skylight you are completely uh you know crippling your team who should be skylight here probably the sledge because he has the nades so he can clear people out of position so if someone's playing on the bomb underneath skylight if someone's playing a uh, bar two if someone's playing freezer he can clear all of those people out and kind of shuffle them a little bit while you know a teammate's holding their cross or their uh their their stand up over whatever piece of uh, object they're using as cover right so the sledge is really really good for that but you guys are missing a lot of key elements here and also you guys are 45 seconds into the round and uh you have no no pressure really nice. okay. guys they got a frost guys, they got you guys a have frost. 15 seconds okay. nobody realizes this e even your dead teammates aren't communicating this uh when you're dead in this game you still have a job you still have a purpose you need to be on cams you need to be calling out the situation. You need to be calling out where your teammates are positioned if they're not communicating where they are. You need to be calling out the time during a round. You know, or so th there's so many things that someone being dead in a round can do, and they they people don't realize it. Like nobody on your team is communicating the fact that you have 25 seconds left and you're just now opening the bathroom wall. Keep in mind that freezer wall was unelectrified for about a minute, literally a minute. That wall should have been opened as soon as you guys step into piano. As soon as you guys establish pixel control or the white doorway control, this wall should be opened. The freezer wall should be opened. You should be droning bathroom. If there's nobody bathroom, great. If there is, then, you know, you you ace that wall as well. And then you clear that guy out. You also have the nades. As I said, you can nade the guy out of bathroom. There's so many different things that you can do. And you and your team aren't even communicating the basics. I'm going for bathroom right here. Nice! Right, well, let's go! No, bro, I did not know he was there at all. Your teammate just said you did not know, he, or he did not know he was there at all. Meanwhile, the Cade was shooting at you while you were going through the bathroom rotate. I know you feel pressured and this will only come with time, so I'm not going to really go into this too much. But people feel pressured way, way, way too I'm much in this game. Uh, they feel the, they feel the pressure, the anxiety, you know. But the Kate is literally right here. Again, the quality probably isn't that great on YouTube, but the Kate is right there. And also, I know he's there by the sound of his uh, TCSG being shot. You need to be calling this out, even though you feel you know really pressured and you know you you feel like you need to go 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 go. But you should be communicating this because let's say you kill the Frost and the Legion a million times over. Well, guess what? It's still a three v one. And if your teammates don't kill this Kate, then they, the the defenders win by default. It's just as simple as that. But I will touch on, uh, you know, for the situation that you were given, even though you shouldn't have never been in the situation, uh, you did do a good job by cleaning up these two kills. Um, you you definitely had a great benefit, or sorry, a great part of uh, winning this round. Uh, so I just want to congratulate, or not congratulate, but kind of give you props for, you know, killing these last two guys because um, that was a huge, a huge part of winning the round, right? You should have your nades with you guys. You need to have Ace go small bakery window, open the small bakery wall, and then also nade this guy out. That is how you effectively take control of bakery. You also have the Monty, which is very good for pressuring this guy in bakery. But you have nades, you have burn, you have Ace as well. You have all, every every single tool that you need to kill this Cade or push him out of this position you have to your advantage. And uh, you have Sledge upstairs for some reason alone, even though you and your teammates communicated that Nomad and Sledge should take above, but Nomad is downstairs with you guys. Uh, and you also have the Ace, which I don't know where he's at at all, but he is gone. Uh, so... <laughs> You guys are miss. You have the you guys have the right chess pieces, but you're they're in the wrong spot. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Okay, That's there. a good shot, though. There is a guy. Wait, wait. There's a castle right here. Wait. I'm trying to think it. He's on for it. There goes your ace. You got. You guys are slipping. That guy. That that ace slipped up so bad. Um, but that was a good shot there. But you should have not been. Uh, 
You should have not been the one to kill that guy. This guy right now should be nated. He should be pushed by the Monty. He sh his, his small bakery wall should be being opened. Like, there should be three different forms of pressure in my eyes being applied to these two people that are paying, playing bakery. But you you are relying way too much on your gun skill. Like, way too much. Uh, You know, having good gun skill is great, but it should not be your sole... It should not be your your number one reliability in this game. Because aiming isn't siege. Thinking is siege. Thinking this game will get you much further than having good mechanics in this game. If you're playing Valorant, sure. Yeah, maybe. There's still utility in that game. If you're playing CSGO, yeah, sure. Having great aim is good. If you're playing Apex, yeah, sure. Any FPS besides Siege, aim is much more important than Siege itself. I'm not saying aim isn't important, but I'm saying that other things besides aim is important. More important, in my opinion. But I'm not saying that you should not stop working on it. Or It's another good really shot. Dead. You played the angles really, really well there. Uh, you, you didn't overpeak. Um, see, little things like that is what you need to pick up on. Uh, on as a player you already did it uh a few rounds ago when you were on defense i want to say i did mention it briefly where you where i was talking about having self-recognition and self uh you know be, be, uh, being able to self-reflect um you need to understand what you just did there and and understand why it worked you played your angles you didn't over peak and you allowed the enemy to peek into you which ultimately got you a kill right i think you did the same thing with the kate where's where's frost i'm being fast Monty, 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 you have the fees moment Monty, you have the fuser. Right, guys, I'm gonna rape. I'm gonna rape B, okay? Oh, we're planting, we're planting, we're planting. You're doing really good on the comms here. This is, Your comms right now should be what's happening by the bare minimum every single round. By the bare minimum. There's still some things that I would like to see you, you know, call out. What you're doing right now is what should be happening by the bare minimum every single time you play this game. Every round, every game should be this. This round right here. I'm not, I'm not talking about decision maker or anything, but I'm talking about callouts. Specifically callouts, this right, is what should be happening every break. round. Don't, do not peek. I can watch. Good job on, on this. Good job. You, you, you understood that someone might be flanking. You knew that nobody was watching your flank, and you capitalized on it, which is a really good decision. This is another example that you can set for yourself, besides the one I touched on briefly uh, earlier on in the video, where you need to understand why something worked and how you can replicate that in other situations. If you can, if you can set out a structure or a blueprint for yourself, watch kills like this or rounds like this, understand what you did during the round to allow it to work for you, and then replicate that in as many situations as you can. Again, this goes back to me saying just a few moments ago, you're answering your own question by asking your question or whatever I said, you're, 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 you're your answer to your question is in your question. Whatever I said. Something along those Ed. lines. Oslo, you, you don't need to be over peaking here. Just play the angles. Yeah, see so you're over peaking. Um, you need you need to you need to either you know hold an angle, stop peaking, or you need to tell the Monty to chill and stop pushing. It's one of those two things. Because if you're not gonna help the Monty, then a Monty in a 1v1 really isn't I, I don't wanna say that great, but he Monty is much better used when there's a, a gun behind him, is what I mean to say. I, I'm not saying that Monty in a 1v1 isn't good, because he is. A 1v4 can very easily be lost. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch out for that. You need, to, you, need to, uh, you need to either tell the Monty to relax and stop pushing, but which, by the way, there's no reason for him to push there, because the Frost has nowhere to go. She either has to cross, cross by the Monty, or she has to go outside Whiskey. Either way, you're gonna have someone there. You're gonna, ha you're gonna have a call out. The Monty is literally a, a bulletproof drone, so he's gonna be calling that out. Or at least he should be. You see exactly what I mean by how fast a 1v or a 1v4 can turn into a 1v1. Look at this. This round right here is effectively a 1v1 situation. The the nomad is down but not out. She she got frost matted. Do you see what I mean? So the Monty over pushing and you over peaking, and then the nomad making an absolutely idiotic decision. <laughs> and then you know if this frost had more time and let's say she hits one lucky bullet to the sludge to sludge's head, right? It's rainbow six siege. Anything can happen. Then, you know, guess what? Now it's a 3 2 uh, game instead of a, a 4 1, where you should have won. Nice. Yeah. Alright, so that is going to be the end of the uh, the VOD. I'm not going to really recap too much because there's a lot that I went over. Uh, but the biggest thing that I'm going to tell you to do is I already said it twice, I think, or maybe three times. Stop putting the right amount of thought into the wrong things and start putting the right amount of thought into the right things. That's the only thing I'm gonna tell you. And if you don't understand what that means, watch the VOD until you do, for the viewer that is.
uh, anyone else, you know, if you feel, if you want to watch the VOD again to pick up on something again, do that. But um, yeah, that is going to wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. These, uh, these VOD reviews are very time consuming. I mean, even alone on the uh, OBS recording, we're at an hour and then I have to edit it, which is going to take two or three or four hours. Who knows? And then I also have to render it X, uh, and then upload it. So these VOD review uh, videos take minimum five hours to make. So, you know, supporting the, the video, the channel by leaving a like, commenting or subscribing is a great, great way to, you know, help me uh, carry on with these videos because by doing that, you can push the video into the YouTube algorithm and have a great impact on how successful the video becomes. But with all that being said, all the support is greatly appreciated, boys. Also, there's links links to my social media in the description. If you guys ever want to shoot me a DM, go follow me on Twitter. I post on TikTok and Instagram every single day as well. Uh, so I'd appreciate the support over, over there. But um, to wrap it up, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the support. I appreciate all, all the good love and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something new. And I will see you guys in the next video.